Right, so this is a story of two halves, really. One half fairly widely reported, but not necessarily very honestly. And another story widely ignored here in the UK by our media, certainly. But I think there's a connection here. On one hand, we have news that the US and others are planning to build a port in Gaza, by which they can deliver aid straight to the Gazan population without having to deal with settlers and other Zionist ideologues blocking the aid on the road in order to starve the captive Gazan population to death. On the face of it, this is a good idea. It'll get aid in. Why they need to build a port? It's being sold as temporary, but why build any sort of port just to deliver aid via the sea? Gaza has a beach, why not just send it at the beach? The other less well-covered story is that of a road that has been under construction from one side of Gaza to the other by Israel. The claim here is that it will enable Israel to deal with threats arising more readily in Gaza in future. It would require them to maintain a foothold in the Strip and it would potentially lead very conveniently to, well, this new port perhaps. Right, so I know I'm far from being alone in eyeing up this proposition of a new port in Gaza with a great deal of scepticism for more than one reason. Just for the purpose, we're told, though, of delivering aid to Gaza. Although that would, of course, be a game changer for the people there right now, surely, wouldn't it? Well, I've got reservations about how Israel would permit said aid from said port to travel to Rafa, for example, in the south, and to those northern areas, to those people who have survived the recent flower massacres. However, given America's failure to even be able to airdrop aid without managing to kill people, the sea route is probably preferable now, isn't it? Thing is, it's not. It's so completely and stupidly unnecessary for that reason that there has to be an ulterior motive here. There are no fewer than seven crossings into Gaza by road. If Genocide Joe really wanted to get aid in, he could do so with just a word. There are aid trucks queued up at crossings, being held up by settlers, laughing and cheering at doing their part to prevent aid into Gaza. Such sick scenes of them waving Israeli flags and dancing about it and cheering. So how about instead of wasting money on a port, you just send a humanitarian task force to the Rafa crossing. This is where most of the Gazan population is now. Dare Israel to stop you and escort that aid in. There are some 1,500 trucks holding some 30,000 tonnes of aid on that border that can't get it in. To send a force to get it in. Why is that not the obvious aid solution? Surely that's the easiest way of doing it. Apparently Biden is sending a 1,000 soldiers to oversee the construction of this port. So why not deploy them elsewhere to these crossings to get aid in right now, not after your port is built? Because how many more people are going to starve whilst waiting for your port to be built? 60 days they reckon it'll take to build this port and once built who will be in charge of it and who will be allowed access to it because the Gazan people get shot at on their beach they've been banned from having a port of their own all this time they won't be allowed near it will they so who is it really being built for here think about it the entire western side of the Gaza Strip is a beach it's the Mediterranean coast from which they are stopped from fishing stopped from accessing trade via sea from they have never been allowed to have a port before. So why all of a sudden is the US able to build one without Israel seemingly complaining about it? Will Israel be running it or the US? Will the US control it while saying Israel do? That would be typical, wouldn't it? Will the Gaza people be able to use it or are they not meant to be a part of the future picture still? Very much how many in Israel would like it. Well, I'd argue that the reason Biden won't deal with trucks stuck on the borders it's because Biden has lost control of his Israel project, but still isn't willing to act accordingly and take them to task and show some force or threaten sanctions until the trucks get in. Stop letting their people block the trucks. It's a very, very simple thing, surely. I don't believe this port will prove to be temporary either. There will be excuses made to keep it open. You don't make temporary ports. But equally, I don't believe it's being built for the purpose of aid either, at least not in the long term. As I said, I think Biden has lost control of Netanyahu. But this port is getting a pass because Israel are the ones really set to benefit from it, as are the US. It certainly won't be the people of Gaza, who have always been prevented, as I said, from having a port before. Now, a lot of people are conjecturing that this will give the US and Israel access to plunder Gaza's gas field, just offshore. However, Israel already have ports of their own along the Mediterranean coast, and they have already granted drilling licenses to the likes of BP, in this area. They don't need a port in Gaza at all for this. They can carry on regardless without a port in Gaza. And it's a red herring, in my view. 
There's a far more pernicious reason behind this, I feel, which brings me on to the second half of this video. And this concerns a road that Israel have been building across Gaza, which has gone virtually unreported. They've been building it for weeks, but which has now divided the Gaza Strip clean in two right across the middle. This road, again, we're being told it's temporary. It could last for years, and it's being called the Netzarim Corridor, named after a former Israeli settlement in Gaza, so thumbing the nose at the Gazan people here again as well, whilst destroying buildings north and south of their road to a distance of 380 metres, creating a buffer zone, where nobody can therefore get within that distance of this Israeli road without being spotted and dealt with, as I dare say, we all know how Israel would. The claimed use for this road is that it will allow Israel to retain a military presence, something they are repeatedly being told they are not allowed to do, a repeated sticking point as this is in any ceasefire talks, because Israel, now they are back in Gaza, frankly have no intention of leaving it again. A road across the very centre of Gaza divides potential insurgents, prevents them organising across the Strip, isolates them, and puts all the main settlements in Gaza within striking distance. However, my issue with this reasoning is that the IDF are not allowing any Gazans to return home. At what point will the people of Rafa, where most of the Gazan population now is, be able to return north to rebuild their lives under this Israeli oversight from this road? Too many in Netanyahu's cabinet want that land for Israel, and they threaten Netanyahu's grip on power if he displeases them. So I don't buy this reason for the existence of this road, and if that road doesn't have access to this US proposed port, well, I will eat my shorts. With the southern port of Eilat blockaded by the Houthis in Yemen, it has become a virtual ghost town. An additional port in the Mediterranean, with a road infrastructure across Gaza, would certainly help with getting supplies not into Gaza, but back into Israel. Especially supplies from the US. And given the US are the ones stumping up the cash to build this port, and despite it being in violation of Israel's 17-year blockade of Gaza, being permitted to have a port, this has got to be something of mutual benefit to both the US and Israel. And it just seems to me to be another excuse under the guise of ordinary goods and supplies to covertly supply arms to Netanyahu's regime. Biden isn't going to this trouble for humanitarian aid. The money's not in it. Not when it would be so much easier to police the crossings as well. This is about something else entirely with so much focus on arms being delivered to Israel by the US, by air notably, likely from RAF Akrotiri on Cyprus, British air base that the US are known to be using, Arms can now be delivered by sea. Trade can be conducted by the US and UK, avoiding Houthi involvement entirely, they who are targeting US and UK ships now. On a level, Israel's Mediterranean ports either can't handle or can't do so without being observed. Because with Gaza effectively being a military zone, and this port certainly would be, nobody would know what exactly is getting in via that port. I can think of no other logical reason, logical reason, for going to the trouble of constructing a port and this road, except for this. For the West to supply Israel with who knows what, without anybody knowing, they can readily get into Israel fast. I sincerely hope to be proven wrong. Meanwhile, if you still think this port could be for gas and oil access in Gaza, the issuing of licenses last December by Israel to steal those resources in effect, which don't belong to them, I covered here in this video recommendation. It just doesn't stand up though. It's too blatant to steal Gaza resources and then rub it in by transporting it across Gaza into Israel when it can just travel to Israeli ports capable of accepting it so it never has to leave a boat in effect. It just doesn't make sense here. Anyway, I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers folks.